Welcome to today's reflective act of worship from Newcastle Cathedral. We hope you will find it helpful as we gather today from many different places, yet one in faith and hope. As God's people we have gathered, let us worship God together. Wherever you may be, try to find a still place, a safe place, a place where you can take a moment to pause in body, mind and spirit. Remember that there are many others, both near and far away, pausing and praying with you in this moment too. Let us pray. Faithful one, whose word is life, Come with saving power to free our praise, inspire our prayer, and shape our lives for the kingdom of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Having stilled and prepared ourselves to hear God's word for us, let us listen to the Gospel reading appointed for today. Luke chapter 5 Verses 33 to the end. Then they said to him, John's disciples, like the disciples of the Pharisees, frequently fast and pray, but your disciples eat and drink. Jesus said to them, You cannot make wedding guests fast while the bridegroom is with them, can you? The days will come when the bridegroom will be taken away from them, and then they will fast in those days. He also told them a parable. No one tears a piece from a new garment and sews it on to an old garment, otherwise the new will be torn and the piece from the new will not match the old. And no one puts new wine into old wineskins Otherwise the new wine will burst the skins and will be spilled and the skins will be destroyed. But new wine must be put into fresh wine skins and no one after drinking old wine desires new wine but says the old is good. Remembering that the word of God is living and active let us now reflect on what God might be saying to us today through this passage of Scripture. Today's reflection is offered by Canon Clare. Well, hello again. If you've been faithfully following these daily reflections, uh, you will know by now that we've moved from Matthew's Gospel and begun to work our way through the Gospel according to St Luke. So our passages come now from the beginning of Jesus' ministry as we begin to learn about his teaching and his healing and the calling of his disciples. He's called fishermen to leave their nets and to follow him. He's called a tax collector to leave his money counting table and to follow him. And people are beginning to ask questions about who this chap is and why he's doing religion so very differently from everybody else. They're challenged by the fact that he's healing people who are ill. They're outraged by the sight of him saying that people's sins are forgiven. What authority does he have to say such a thing? And here today, we see them beginning to challenge the things that he's teaching his disciples. First of all, why on earth are you hanging out with tax collectors and sinners? And then today, well, everybody else who says they're holy fasts and prays all the time. Why is it that you and your disciples seem to be quite happy to eat and drink with other folk and celebrate life? Well, I don't sometimes think that when we're reading scriptures, we can take it all a bit too seriously, as perhaps these onlookers did. I think Jesus has quite a twinkle in his eye when he speaks the words that we hear him speaking today. 
he turns to them and he says, basically, you miserable lot. You wouldn't say to the wedding guests that they weren't allowed to celebrate when the bridegroom was in their presence, would you? So why on earth should my disciples have to fast and pray when I am still with them? There'll be plenty of time for being serious and solemn when tougher times are upon us. Don't be such a bunch of misery guts. He's doing something new, isn't he? Calling people to new ways of being. Calling people to new ways of understanding what God's will is for our lives, and for our world and for our religious institutions. And he carries on in a similar vein. And obviously, every time you try to explain a joke, it ceases to be funny. So I know I'm treading on dodgy ground here. But he carries on and tries to explain this new thing that he's doing. He basically says, did you hear the one about the woman who went out and bought new school trousers for her son? and then proceeded to cut bits out of them in order to mend last year's old trousers. How ridiculous, we're all supposed to say. You'd never do a silly thing like that. The new trousers should be kept smart and new, and the old trousers patched with old fabric. Then Jesus carries on. Did you hear the one about the bloke who made a batch of wine and bottled it too soon, so that before long, all of the bottles in the cellar exploded under the pressure of the wine and they smashed. And the cellar floor was covered with half fermented wine. Nobody would be stupid enough to do that, would they? <laughs> Actually, I know one or two home brewers who have been stupid enough to do something pretty similar. And Jesus is saying with a twinkle in his eyes, I'm doing something new here. Why don't you join in? But he's not saying the old is rubbish, throw it away. He's saying both old and new are fit for purpose, just for different purposes. He's challenging his listeners to be a bit less narrow-minded and open to change. It's quite interesting that the last verse of the passage we've heard today says, And no one after drinking old wine desires new wine, but says the old is good. There's been some controversy about that verse in this passage. One or two older versions of the Bible leave it out altogether. And I think that's because many Christians have wanted to say, no, what Jesus is doing is new and far better than what went before it. But Jesus is having none of it. His is a both and philosophy rather than an either or. And he says we need to keep the best of the old and use it when it is fit for purpose as well as being open to the excite and fizz of the new. I'm not throwing away the old wine, he says, but working on a new vintage here. So instead of standing there with your lips pursed in disapproval, why don't you join me for a drink? Change can be unsettling and something that we struggle to come to terms with. And there's a lot of change around at the moment, isn't there? But perhaps Jesus is calling us all to try to be a bit less narrow-minded than sometimes we can be, if we're really honest. And to accept that in God's economy, we're invited to make the best of both old and new. In the words of the 34th Psalm, to taste and see that whatever the vintage, the Lord is good. Take a moment, press pause if you want, 
to reflect on what, if anything, struck you during today's reflection. Were there words of comfort? Were there words of challenge? And now, remembering that all are precious in God's sight, let us pray. Lord Jesus, you are the bridegroom, and we, your church, are your chosen bride. Thank you that you choose us, call us, and love us as your beloved. We pray for your church in this diocese, in these days, that we would celebrate that you are God with us. Renew our life and witness. Restore our joy and hope. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, as your chosen ones, holy and beloved, clothe us with compassion and kindness, that we might serve our neighbour, care for the poor, and seek out the lost. Give us generosity of heart, the words to speak of you, and the courage to act in love. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you turn water into wine. You take the ordinary and transform it to your glory. We long for signs of your transforming glory in our world, bringing peace and justice to those places of violence and oppression. We pray for signs of your transforming love in our lives, bringing healing and comfort to the broken and grieving. Lord, have mercy. Almighty and everlasting God, you are always more ready to hear than we to pray and to give more than either we desire or deserve. Pour down upon us the abundance of your mercy, forgiving us those things of which our conscience is afraid, and giving us those good things which we are not worthy to ask, but through the merits and mediation of Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. As our Saviour Christ has commanded and taught us, so we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. May God give you his comfort and his peace, his light and his joy, in this world and the next. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with you and with those you love, this day and always. Amen. Let us dwell in the peace and protection of God, this day and always. Amen. Thank you for joining us in worship today. If you have enjoyed it, 
please subscribe to our YouTube channel for the next upload or visit the Cathedral's website. The information is on the screen. Now may God bless you and watch over you and those you love this day and always.